And we're live. Hello, good evening. It's, um, it's Wednesday night, as ever was. It would be the, uh, the 20th of November, as it happens. And if you are watching us live on the vaportrails.tv website live page, congratulations, you've overcome the internal server errors which appear to be plaguing people left, right and centre. If you are watching us elsewhere, we have tweeted a direct link um, and we probably will put the direct link into chat as well in case you need it. Um, for whatever reasons, whether it's thunderstorms or we just don't know at this point in time, but we're working hard to try and get everything rectified, it would appear that both chat roll and the website have decided to play silly buggers tonight. So please bear with us. Sav's going to have a hell of a job keeping up with chat, but she will get there. And I should point out she spent most of the day, as has Kat, uh, trying out and seeking out new uh, group chat solutions to allow us to do things a little less jumpily. Isn't that right, Sav? It is, yes, it is. <laughs> yes. Are you, are you breathing? I'm, I'm, I'm done. I've tweeted, I've put the link in chat. I'm done. I'm good. It's all good. Hello. Good, good. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Nice to see you. Top of the evening to you, I suppose <laughs> I should say. Um, that's, that's Sav, who needs no introduction. She is the effervescent loveliness and the bountilicious babe that is the one and only Sav. And to the right of Sav, Sav's right, your left, over there, he said, putting his finger more or less where the head is, we have Lorian C from Ecker, or Lorian from Ecker, as everybody, and I mean everybody, including the BBC, knows her as. Good evening, Lorian. How are you doing? I'm OK, thank you very much. Yeah. Goodly good. good. And what's, uh, what's, what's the weather doing down there with you at the minute? Um, sporadic, squally, um, hail, showers and wind and stuff. It's all very exciting. I quite like it, actually. Right. We've got baby weather up here. It's cold, wet and windy. And <laughs> with, the, with the occasional rumblings of flatulence, I think that's possibly the easiest way to say. Um, I think it's probably a good idea that we get on with the show. I'm going to be monitoring Twitter as well when I haven't got stuff on the screen. So if you can't get onto chat, um, just use the hashtag VTTV and point it at Sav or me. Are you online with Twitter as well, Sav? I am, yes. On the VTTV account? Um, I'm putting Daz on the VTTV account. I'll be on my account, you'll be on your account. There you go. You'll, you'll get to us one way or another. You're bound to be able to get to us one way or another. We'll, we'll pull all the stops out to make the show work. If it slows down a little bit, it's because I'm harder thinking. I'm sobering up. Um, so, yes, on with the show. This is a show called VT Talk. <laughs> And indeed, good evening and welcome to all of you. It's been somewhat an eventful week this week with all kinds of things happening. And it would appear, for whatever reason, that those who would oppose the free non-med distribution and regulation of e-cigs, in other words, those that would like to see them regulated as medicines, are out in force left, right and centre and trying to bend the will of the populace in their direction at the drop of a hat. For instance, he said, sounding like Jimmy Carr, but not intending to, just before the show, we were discussing that, what's his name again, Lorian? Simon Chapman? That, that would be the delightful Simon Chapman, yeah. Yes, he's been tweeting that a thread has um, started on Planet of the Vapes about a shop who, in the middle of refurbishment, had displayed e-cigs on the front counter instead of the back counter and while a member of the forum was there had also sold an e-cig to a youngster some somebody patently under the age of 18 but who was in a secondary school uniform and mr chapman has been tweeting on this what's he had to say 
Um, oh, it's just his normal smug self in that, oh, look, this is happening, isn't this horrendous? It was actually quite a short tweet, but his intention was quite clear. Right. OK, so yet again, well, then we've got Simon Chapman picking up on something, well, which actually I, I, I find encouraging. Um, I've got to say, I'll do the full screen thing on this and, and, and go to the other camera. I, I actually think it is quite encouraging that the shop would stop selling Lucy's and those of us of a certain age know what they are, singleton cigarettes, would stop selling Lucy's, but would instead sell an e-cigarette. I think that's actually a good thing. I'd rather kids were using e-cigs than real fags, if the truth be told. But of course, Simon Chapman will take that as trying to set up a gateway. Um, there are many people who would think that anybody under 18 shouldn't be sold e-cigs at all, but I still take the view I'd rather have a kid who was smoking and has now moved to e-cigs, I don't see a problem with that, and we don't know what the circumstances of it are. But enough of that one, that's just one of the uh, one of the bits that are, that are being arrayed against us. Um, even Holland, who you would have thought would have been one of the last places that would try to have a go at something safe, given the, the tolerance they have for drugs, illicit drugs, where I believe it, am I right in thinking it's totally decriminalised everything over there, heroin and everything? I don't know if it all is. I think that they were changing how holiday makers they were clamping down on cafes, weren't they? Last year, the year before. Yeah, that started January. The, I think it either starts January the first or start of January the first, where tourists can't go over there and um, imbibe, as it were. Yeah, yeah, something like that. Bit of a bugger. I'll go to Ireland instead. <laughs> Guinness is good for you. Oh, yes, before we get into this bit, can I just say a big thank you to all of Ireland for putting up with us, uh, myself and my wife, while we were over there. We had an absolutely cracking time, and yes, we will be back next year. As soon as you know where it's going to be, let me know. I'm booting a hotel. I'm getting in first. Brilliant time. The crack was mighty. That's an Irish phrase, you know. But to Holland. To Holland, to Holland, to Holland, to Holland, which is... And before you jump over to Holland, I've just got a couple of comments that I have managed to grab from chat, so I'm damn well going to read them. Go for it, Sav. Go, go, go. <laughs> um, regarding the, the convenience store, um, funny tricks this is, I don't know why these people are focusing on kids buying e-cigs when the alternative would be tobacco, and they've been able to find a way to buy that for years. Mm -hmm. Midge Dog says, I saw and tweeted about the same display today, didn't realise it was already being discussed, still think the shopper should be responsible and keep it 18+. plus. Vapor Man says, I got my 15-year-old steps on an e kit to get him off cigarettes. And Joe Lincoln said, kind of funny how Simon Chapman didn't notice the outcry from vapors on Planet of the Vapes. That's it. You can go. Now I'm going to talk about it now. <laughs> now that I know, I'm, go I'm going to talk about it. Yeah. Listen, look, it, it, for me, it, it, it is actually very, very simple. There's a three-way choice here. Kids either don't experiment with anything, or they're going to experiment with fags, or they're going to experiment with e-cigs, and there's a fourth choice. They're going to experiment with fags for however long and decide, make the sensible choice, that e-cigs are a better option for them. That option and that option, the option where they decide to experiment with e-cigs rather than experiment with fags, and that option where they decide that they'd rather go to e-cigs than stick with fags, to me are damn good options. That's a 50-50 choice, because the option, actually, it's not a 50-50, is it? It's a 50-20, 5-2.5, because that option there, where they experiment with nothing, is not going to happen. Teenagers rebel, and you can guarantee, you can absolutely guarantee, that every teenager will, at some point, have had a drag off a fag. Some think they'll stay with it, Others don't like it, but that, that's my take on it. Sav, I'm sorry I'm going to be making your job really hard tonight. Um, look, let's make it easy. If you grab anything, just dive in. Don't well, wait to be before asked. I, before you say that, I've also said if people can't get chat, then get me on Twitter at, at sav underscore vttv or use the hashtag vttv or vttalk and we'll, I'll try and keep on top of them. <sighs> And we've got we've got we've got Daz Manning another one and I'm yeah, I'm trying to keep my Manning, Daz is Manning, everyone's Manning Twitter. So and I've actually got a tweet about Holland, but I don't know if we've talked about Holland. If we, when did we talk about Holland? I don't remember Holland. <laughs> but we haven't spoken about Holland yet. 
Okay, well, when we do, I've got a tweet about it. Have you? Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, it was. It was also well planned. This show was. You know, we, was we knew it? what we we knew exactly what we were going to be doing. We knew exactly where we were going to be going, and then the gremlins of it. Right. Let's go to Holland now. Holland. Here we are. Holland. This is from the National Institute for Public Health and the Environment, the Ministry of Health, Welfare and Sport. I'm surprised they haven't got buses and trains in there as well. And it is very, very badly named an e-cigarette fact sheet. Um, there is another word that we could use, but I'm too ladylike. Lorian, you tell them. I, no, you can't possibly put me that in, in that position. I think everybody knows what's going to be coming. A fact sheet isn't going to be it. Well, exactly right. It says, what is an electronic cigarette and a shisha pen? Because shisha pens are very popular in Holland, apparently. <laughs> Strangely enough, amongst the kids. Yeah, here we go. Um, it, it goes through and actually doesn't get it badly wrong when it's talking about e-cigarettes. But you will notice from that picture that is on screen now that it's a generation... God, it's not even generation one. That's generation zero, that one. That, in fact... Looks like a 901. Would you agree, Sav? It looks very like a 901 to me, yes. That would be because it is a 901. Um, <laughs> for, for, for benefit of those that have only got into e-cigs in the last two years, the 901 was around four and a half years ago and was deprecated within 12 months, really. Nobody was using them. So that particular e-cig that they've got on that, uh, on that picture hasn't been around for three years. So you can imagine how well up to date this is. But let's blast on. How do e-cigs work? It says, use a heat and element, vaporise nicotine, other ingredients, simulating the visual, sensory and behavior, behavioural aspects of smoking without the combustion of tobacco. Actually, they could have stopped there and done without the rest of it. The user inhales the mist or vapour generated by drawing on the mouthpiece and activating the heating element which vaporises the liquid. The vapour is only produced while the heating element is activated and not between puffs. I am not going to put my 134 in my hand and show that that's a lie. Um, the vapour is generated by heating elements to temperatures ranging from 65 degrees centigrade to 120. That's not right. With reported maximum atomizer temperature of approximately 250. That's not right. Um, or I'll say, look, it, it, there's, there's barrel loads of it here. And then we get to how are e-cigs regulated? E-cigarettes are regulated as a recreational product under the Warren Wet and are not strictly regulated as with tobacco products and medicines. So they are regulated already in Holland. Yeah? Anybody saying they're not regulated anywhere, please take note of that. They are. How many people use e-cigarettes in the Netherlands? Blah, blah, blah. 1% of people use e-cigarettes occasionally. Five tried it once or twice and 94% have never tried it. Are there any regular users in Holland? Does anybody know? Have we got any Dutchmen? Uh, well, Whitbread Up 69's just said, I hardly saw any vaping in Holland. Lots of smoking, though. Okay. Well, that's fair enough. So maybe they, they, they haven't taken off there yet. Possibly not. Possibly not. Is there, and here we come, here we come, here we come. What is the attitude of Europeans in regards to the harmful health effects to those who use them? You'll notice the wording here. What is the attitude of Europeans in regards to the harmful health effects to those who use them? And it's like this is where the balance goes straight out of the window. Is there a concern that e-cigarettes might be a gateway for young people to smoke conventional cigarettes? Is there an age limit for buying e-cigarettes? Is there for adult use only warning in the wrapper or cartridge label? Is there any information on the age distribution of e-cigarette users? Um, there, there's all kinds of information and actually quotes the UK there, not Holland. Addictive properties and uses a cessation product. Oh my God. Uh, I'm, I'm, just, I'm not going to plough through it all. You can see what's there. The links will be in the... Uh, on the Facebook page, I assume, Sav, and, and yep. everywhere else we put them, and all of this kind of stuff, health and safety, or any of the components, topic, uh, it's just, it's the usual anti, what starts off as looking as though it's going to be reasonable and well-balanced, ends up being the usual anti-nicotine and tobacco zealot bullshit. That's the phrase. It's not a fact sheet, it's a shit sheet. 
in my humble opinion, which is not that humble. And I do apologise for using those words, but these people are beginning to get my back up. Lorian, what do you think? I think uh, there's no surprise really in that, really, is it? It's the first time I've seen it. Um, I've had a rather a busy day, but um, that's pretty much what we've seen um, globally from various health groups and advisory groups and whatnot. The same sort of stuff. It's almost like somebody's feeding them nonsense from somewhere. Well, I can't imagine who would be doing that. <laughs> Can't imagine who that would be. Sav, does anybody in chat know who is feeding all this misinformation? They don't have a clue who is doing it at all. Well, I think we should find out who is doing all of this, don't you? Ah, totally agree. Yes, absolutely right. But it's not all doom and gloom, is it? Oh, hang on, before you go on, I've got more stuff. Okay. Um, <laughs> Mr. Desi Vapor says he knows one Dutchman who is a vapor. An MP said, I'm pretty sure Holland has an e-cig vendors association. Yes, and if I remember rightly, um, not last night, but last week on DE Talks, they had the representative of the newly formed vendor association in Holland. Or not necessarily vendor association, but e-cig association. Um, so that's a very new thing that's getting off the ground over in Holland. So that may be a step in the right direction. Well, it, uh, to, to me, it, it, it certainly sounds like a step in the right direction because if they're going to keep on putting lack of fact sheets out like that, then that's a much better term than shit sheet, isn't it, really? Yes. I, I do apologise, viewers. It's, it's not like me to swear. <coughs> As those in Ireland will undoubtedly attest, I don't swear much. Um, yeah, I mean, they, they, they obviously need some opposition to all of this misinformation and disinformation that keeps on being peddled by people we know not who. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a quick break which will give Sav chance to stop panicking and capture anything she can find. And when we come back, I'm going to show you the flip side of the coin. And this, I have to say, has made me feel quite good. We shall be back in but two minutes. Don't go anywhere. And we are back in the room here on the 20th of November in VT Talk with Sav and Lorian. If you are watching on the, the stream that's not in our live web page, well done. You're obviously on Twitter and saw the link. If you are watching on the vapertrails.tv live page, a word of advice. When you're finished, don't close the page. 
because it might not reload. Apparently, Dave Kitson, who knows about these things and is a very clever bloke, is rebuilding the website around our ears, even as we speak. So, good luck, Dave. Good luck. Apparently, it's something to do with email. I, I barely know how to get out of bed on the morning. When it comes to websites, I haven't got a clue. Have you anything else from chat, Sav? No. Nah. <laughs> They're all asking who's who. Who's who? Who's who? I wish I knew who who was. Who who? 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 It's starting to sound like a Geordie convention, isn't it? Who? Who? Where's who who? Who? What's who day? Oh, let's go to something a bit more light, a bit more up uplifting and light hearted. From the United States of Americania, which is a very nice place, came this big farmer, not tobacco companies wage war on electric on electronic cigarettes it's got me doing it now i was listening to somebody else making a presentation where they called them electric cigarettes all day madness it says electronic cigarettes give smokers a nicotine fix without the stink tar fire or carbon monoxide of real cigarettes there may be a cheap healthy way to help smokers quit oh god okay no let's not go any further with that let's let's mm. come back to me laurie and we were talking about this quit word before weren't we Yes, we were earlier today. Can can we can we make a request, Laurie and I, and we're going to flutter our eyelashes. It'll work better with her than it <laughs> you does. <can> do it. <laughs> work better with Laurie than it does with me. Can we please ask any journalists watching this to understand? We do not use e-cigs to quit. We use them as a substitute for our smoking habit. And what we are doing by substituting e-cigs for ordinary cigs is minimising the risk from nicotine use. We are not quitters. Me mum never raised a quitter. The quit word should not be used. Would you agree, Lorian? I agree. Um, it's, we've, we've discussed this a couple of times now, actually. I, I think it's very hard not to use the quit word because we're so conditioned to you're a smoker, you're dirty, you're disgusting. Um, because that's what we've been told for most of our adult lives, then you're given this quit word um, and sometimes you manage to do it and then you want to shout it from the rooftops. But it's actually what's um, kind of sealing our troubles for us is that they really want to use it against us. And it's just a word and it's so annoying. <coughs> but the reality is um, it's doing damage to us. And frankly, I think it's doing damage to the efforts of getting people to stop smoking full stop. It's too much pressure. I would agree. I think you're right. I think you're right. So you've been told. If you take no notice of me, take notice of Lorian. Because Lorian's good friends with Chris and Sav. Yeah. And, and Mark Shaw's just said in chat, it's illegal to use the quit word when selling, while it contravenes trading standards anyway. And he's, he is so right. He is so right. On with the plot, back to where it's going to be jumpy about tonight, because everything is. But bear with us, there is actually a theme. Seriously, there is a plot. For the moment, I've lost it, but we'll get there. <laughs> Where were we? Here we That's go. That's what DK is looking for. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, there may be a, a cheap, healthy way to help smokers substitute something safer for their smoking habit. See? It was easy. So, I'll give you three guesses which industry is behind the global push to clamp down on e-cigarettes. If you assumed concerned doctors or consumer rights ad advocates are the driving force for regulation in Europe and the US, then you haven't been paying attention to the way profit and politics interact. If you said big tobacco, close, but no cigar. That's, that was funny. That was a good piece of that. Yeah. Philip Morris, RJ Reynolds and Laurie Lard all jumped in the e game in the past two years. They're not opposing regulation, the big guys rarely do, but they're pushing back on the most onerous rules. Big Pharma is the real foe of e-cigs and big government is their weapon of choice on both sides of the pond. This fall, the European Parliament considered new rules regulating e-cigs. E-cigarette manufacturers, of course, lobbied like crazy to block the proposal and it seems they won. But the drug makers fought for stricter regulations for obvious reasons. E-cigarettes compete with the prescription drugs that are supposed to help people stop smoking. I now will read a list of names of the real devils. GlaxoSmithKline sells Nicorette gum and Johnson & Johnson manufactures nicotine patches. The New York Times reported these companies helped lead strong opposition to e-cigarettes. Back to me. In the beginning, 
when the Commission was looking at putting together the revisions to the back to tobacco product directive, the Commission, in its own little glory holes of offices, had written down that there should be bespoke regulation for electronic cigarettes and other nicotine containing products. They recognised that there was a need for something that actually understood what e-cigs were about. And then they were lobbied. Guess who by? I've just read the names. So now you know. That's where a lot of the opposition comes from. And also people and outfits that are funded by Big Pharma seem to be rallied and railing against e-cigs being anything other than medicinally regulated. I can't of course say who that <laughs> might be. Laurie, you any uh, any idea? I can't imagine who that could possibly be, no. Yeah, it could be them or, uh, well, who? Who, who else? Who else? They're, they're adjuncts. There are many, many people who, uh, for, for, what, for whatever reason, seem to like the idea that pharma manages to keep a handle on e-cigs and that it should only be under their purview. But what they seem to forget is that in so doing, they're actually going to condemn a lot of people um, to illnesses that they might otherwise not have contracted if we are to believe the propaganda we've been fed over the last 30 years. And I have to say, I do like using them, their own facts and figures and propaganda back against them. I think that's a good idea and it, it works quite well sometimes, you know. Um, yes, and I've lost my track on where I was going with that one, Sav. Right, I've got a couple of things. Um, Formiga has just put in, a farmer needs six smokers. That's why NRT only marginally works. Inefficient by design. And then e cigs pop up. How inconvenient. Mm. And Funny Tricksters just made a, an observation. He says, I saw the nurse at, the, at my doctor's for a blood pressure and asthma test. When I said I'd switched to e cigs over a year ago, she went on to ask if I'd reduced my nicotine. Yeah, right. She obviously had no idea that I'm not using it as NRT. Well, this is, this is the point. This is the actual point. And this is why this quick word and the, and the phrase smoking cessation can be so dangerous. Because, and it is simply because, the world and his wife, but worse for us, politicians and a lot of public health activists, <coughs> understand quit and smoking cessation to mean nicotine abstinence is the final goal. And indeed, at the um, e-cig e summit last week, we heard one or two speakers, some of whom I thought might have been friends, were saying that, yes, of course, that's the gold standard. We want everybody to stop using nicotine. And indeed, one of the vendors that was there weighed in and said, yes, we understand that, you know, if we are to abide by what it seems as though you want, we'll be out of business in two generations' time. Now, there's a, there's a point here that I think many people don't get. Nicotine as a drug, and this was stated by Jacques Luzek, uh, Jean-Francois Etter, um, Monsieur Flau, uh, Robert West even as well, didn't he? Said. They all, all, all of them said nicotine is not particularly hazardous. It's not the big nasty beast. On that Dutch thing that we were looking at before, they said that the LD50, the lethal dose, is somewhere between 30 and 60 milligrams. I'm going to ask Lorian to tell us what they told us at the summit. What did they tell us, Lorian? What is the LD50 now? Is it 1,200, 1,500? I can't remember which one it was, but it was significantly higher because essentially the figures that we've been fed for years and years uh, are made up, more or less. Um, they're, they're based on... Well, sort of nothing. Um, yeah, and it, I think it was, it was, I can't know if it was Et or if it was Flahout, to come who it was, but essentially we are completely wrong on our idea of how dangerous nicotine actually is. Completely wrong. A absolutely bang, spot on, right. For a very long time, everybody has thought that nicotine is this m mega fast acting systemic poison, the slightest drip of which would send you into paroxysms of deafness. Not death, but death, lack of breath, stopping breathing, 
heart going off, not palpitations switched off on 60 milligrams. No, absolutely, definitely not. No, 1200 milligrams orally or via the lung will not kill you. That's the LD50. So you've got a 50% chance of survival and 1500 has also been tested. In fact, a bloke drank 1500 milligrams of <laughs> nicotine. He wasn't very well. <laughs> and apparently he was vomiting for whichever country he represents, but he didn't die and, and wouldn't have died. So we're wrong about that. Now, let's take that on. If nicotine is not the devil it has been made out to be by the propagandizing that's come out of tobacco control over the last 30 years. And if it is, in fact, as Professor John Britton of the Royal College of Physicians, who ought to know about these things, if it is, as he says, pretty much the equivalent of having a strong cup of coffee, then where is the problem? Where is the problem? Lauren? Well, I think it's safe to say there probably isn't one. Um, and if we if we jump back and look at the idea um, of the vendor who stood up at the summit and said that within two, two, three decades, whatever it was, that he would be happy to see his business go out of business. Um, do we actually have a problem with the idea that in 10, 20 years time, that rather than we've got pubs full of people smoking, we've got pubs full of people using electronic cigarettes? <clears throat> because if tobacco disappears, there'll only be something else which will replace it in terms of risky, dangerous behaviour. Um, and if it's as dangerous as coffee, what, what are we worrying about? Or what are they worrying about? It's senseless. Well, it's puritanism. In, 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 in my... Um in my mind, that's all it is. It's puritanism. It, it's the whole idea that somewhere somebody is enjoying themselves and apparently that sends them into floods of tears. They don't like it. Um, but yeah, I mean, the bottom line on it is, so what? People start drinking coffee every day. As young as, I don't know. You, only you out there know how old you were when you had your first cup of coffee. But if there's no... Since 12. <clears throat> I would have been about six. <laughs> it's quite a family, my family, really, seriously, you don't want to know. But I wasn't, I didn't have a bad childhood, I just didn't have a childhood. Um, go on, Sav, I can see you, you're desperate, you're desperate, I can see, go on. <laughs> well, I've got quite a bit that I've managed to grab from chat. One comment from Leanna Lawless that I am going to read out, it was from earlier on, but I'm going to read out anyway. And she said, it's funny how smoking was safer in the 60s according to all the stats that they used then. Mm -hmm. compared to the stats that they use now Mitch Dogg has said it's a safer alternative nothing about quitting Nick which I have no desire to do mm -hmm. Winter Rogue says I won't be giving up my nicotine anytime soon cold dead hands is all she'll say mm -hmm. Leanna Lawless has also said so do they now want us to quit eating tomatoes as well because they contain nicotine well that was one of my points but I wasn't going to go there till somebody else did but now that you have <laughs> yes I agree totally yeah. and potatoes and aubergines and anything else from the Salanum fa family Exactly. Dick Puddlecourt has said tobacco control has been making stuff up for decades. Mm -hmm. And um, Leanna Lawless has also said regarding the LD50, she says, yes, the original one was based on weird self experimentation in the 19th century and it was just sort of taken as fact from there on in. I, I, I have to admit, I'm. Um, um I'm, I'm kind of curious as to what the self experimentation was. <laughs> <clears throat> Maybe he thought if he vomited. That was him going to die. So obviously, wasn't a doc. Anyway, whatever it was, whatever whatever the source of it was, it is was effectively made up. It wasn't arrived at scientifically, but it has been now, and this has been backed up and peer reviewed by the world experts in nicotine. Go for it, Sav. And I was just about to say, I know there was a, a big piece that um, Dr. Farsalinos did explaining all about all the where this all came from stuff. It was a very very good piece that was on Facebook quite a while ago that if I could find the link for I would have, but I can't, so I won't. But it explains all that, where that um, 19th century study came from and how it all became known as now fact, quite cleverly. Well, indeed, yes. And, and, and the fact that a couple of people have mentioned that 30 years ago, fags were apparently safer. Um, mm. There's something else has occurred to me. You, 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 you may wish to internalise these arguments. Um, and use them at a later date because I'm going to ask you to. It's me. You know what's going to happen. Um, the year I was born, 1955, for those of you that are wondering, and yes, I'm 21. The year I was born, the smoking prevalence rate in the UK was in the order of 
In the year that NRT came out, the smoking prevalence, which is 1973, 1976, there or thereabouts, smoking prevalence rate in the UK had dipped below 40%. But in between whiles, it, it, it kind of dropped fairly steadily, I suppose. So I was brought up at a very early age in a world where everywhere was full of smoke. Even on single deck of buses, you could smoke. In the cinema, you could smoke. In the pub, you could smoke. Didn't matter where you went. Effectively, if you saw an ashtray, you could smoke. And you didn't have to use binoculars. They were everywhere you looked. So from being born until 1973, when I went to university, I was exposed to probably 20 times the second-hand smoke that most people have been since then. Also, I should point this one out, and I usually make a bit of a secret of this, but I'm, I'm decided I'm not gonna. I worked the same circuit as Roy Castle, at the same time as Roy Castle, sometimes with Roy Castle. And I know all the members of the bands and everything else that went around, there's none of us have gone pop. Make of that what you will. Um, yeah, there's been a lot of misinformation and disinformation. They've tried to put the blame totally on nicotine. And we need to take the blame off nicotine because nicotine is not what it has been made out. It is effectively the other side of the coin from caffeine. They are two peas in a pod, both in effect and in terms of addictiveness and in terms of risk or harmfulness. You might like to use that when you talk to your MP because that's going to be a question that will come up, I am sure. Saf, anything more? Uh, Gillis has just put, the um, problem is uneducated or unwilling to listen hear nicotine and think tobacco and death. The aunties, farmer and who are using this to defeat e -cigs. That, yes, this is the point. We've discovered over the last 11 months or so that those who would rail against us are very well organised and have millions and millions and millions of euros and pounds and dollars to rail against us. What we have, though, is our ethics and our knowledge of what we're doing and the fact that we know from our own experience that we're telling the truth. And this, I think, is what you need to be sharing with your MP. Because you went to see your MP, didn't you, Lorian? I did, and it was wonderful. It, do you know, the first set, the first meeting I had with him, I honestly, I left, I drove halfway down the road, pulled into a lay-by and burst into tears um, for about 20 minutes. That's because you're um, a girl. Uh, yeah, that's because I'm a girl, obviously, um, because he knew nothing. He had no idea that I, I'd even emailed him. My second meeting with him, he'd gone off himself. In fact, his first words to me were, I bet you were pleased about the EU vote. Um, he'd gone and asked his friends. He's got a vaping neighbour. He's got a vaping secretary. Um, he was worried about the kids and the flavours. And then he'd gone and found out for himself, realised that was nonsense and was fully supportive. Um, so when I left my last session I felt like crying again but for an entirely different reason because that seeing you face to face realizing you're genuine that your story is real and that you understand what you're talking about is what makes a difference with them they can ignore letters and emails their their assistants and their aides can answer them but if you sit there in front of them they cannot ignore you and they can see that you're genuine that you're real and that's what makes the difference because then they have to question what they were thinking beforehand so there you are that's that's what we all need to be doing and I, I sincerely hope and trust that you're not leaving it too late and I've got some housekeeping as well before we go into the next adverts next week's show is going to be a little bit special in itself mm. I have a guest for next week's show that a fair few people might have heard of haven't I Sav mm. they were watching the show last week and they said it was fabulous didn't they Sav mm -hmm. the special guest is Chris Choi from the Tonight programme on ITV. But it'll not just be Chris Choi who will be sat in the red chair over there where Keith normally sits. There'll be a cameraman over there and a producer with headphones on doing funny things with flatterboards and what have you. And I'll have to behave myself. The reason behind that is because they're doing a one hour long documentary on e-cigs that will be aired early to mid-January. 
and they want to talk to vapors and they want to see having seen what we do on vapor trails they want to see how we do it and chris wants to talk to some vapors as well so all three windows will be open with people in sav will be here because they specifically wanted sav to be there because they know i'm useless without her basically <laughs> Somebody had already told them that. It could have been me. <laughs> but it's true enough. Um, and there'll be a couple of other vapors there as well. Um, and we're going to, basically, that's, that's what will be happening on the Wednesday night. On the Wednesday morning, at around about 10 of Her Majesty's clock, I shall be presenting the Save ACIG's letter to Jane Ellison MP, the junior minister in the Department of Health who oversees all of this, the TPD, e-cigs and all of that kind of stuff. She's, uh, she's the new Anna Soubry, but I sincerely hope a lot better than somebody who's so attracted to green. Not that green's a bad colour, you understand, it just looks blue to me. Um, and I really, really do want to need a wheelbarrow. Please, 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 if you haven't already signed, go and sign it. And, and just sign it. Don't worry about what it says. Just sign it. Seriously, just sign it. It's using their rhetoric against them. So just sign it and get everybody you know to sign it. You're going to have, I would imagine, until Sunday, Monday at the latest, to get those signatures in. And then, hopefully, I'm going to need a beer cart to take all of these bits of paper to drop off with Jane Ellison MP. More importantly, you see, ITV will be filming it. There will be a film crew there. And Wednesday night will follow up on that with Chris Choi. Further, on Thursday, there's going to be a mini-meet during the day in, we think, the new Crown at South Shields, which ITV will be filming. They want to talk to vapours. So if you're up here in the North East, or if you can get up here, let me know. Please, we need people for them to talk to. I want to be able uh, for ITV to see that we're actually normal people from all different walks of life with all different lo uh, looks, outlooks. What's the word I'm looking for? Outlooks on life and that kind of thing. So it's going to be a busy couple of days next Wednesday and Thursday. Um, it's going to be really, really exciting and hopefully it's going to turn out really, really well for all of us in January. And on that note, we'll go to the second set of adverts. And when we come back, we'll keep on talking. And I will find the plot and we'll get to the point of everything, I think. Will we, Sav? I have no idea. <laughs> it will be what it is, but it will be enjoyable. Don't go anywhere. Back in a couple of ticks. Oh. <laughs>
<laughs> Do you know something? There are, there are times when I feel a proper fool. Tonight is one of those times. You'd think I'd forgotten how to drive all of this lot, and I am not going to blame the Guinness. It was the Guinness self. It's the Guinness that's at fault. Yeah. yeah, without a doubt. What's my excuse? I don't know. I don't, we'll just say it's the gremlins that are waged, waged against us. That's what it yeah. is. And the fact that I drank my own weight in Guinness while I was in Ireland has got nothing to do with anything at all, at all, at all. It rubs off, you know. It does. It rubs off. You haven't frozen, have you? No, you just sat still. Um, <laughs> I come across some strange stuff when I'm out and about around the web trying to find, you know, things to talk about. Um, and I came across this. I'm not going to say where it's from, but it's, it's an interesting one. It's called Vaping in, in Public Stealthy Vaping Techniques. <laughs> Seriously, we've got a link for it. Go and have a look at it after the show. Um, but I think we've covered some of this before, but it's all talking about being stealthy, hiding what you are doing, um, saying things like secretly vaping in a pub or bar is possible, assuming you have mastered holding your e -cig in your palm to disguise your inhalations in any LED light it has. These people are obviously, I'm going to say, they've never seen that, have they? <laughs> you know... <laughs> yeah, and I, look what Lorian's holding up as well. Get it up there, Lorian. I'm just trying to imagine how I'm going to hide palm that away from people. <laughs> um, well, yes. Um, no, there's so little time and so many punchlines. No, I mean, there's, there's not a hope in hell of hiding anything like that when you're out and about. And why the hell would you? Um, it goes on to say vaping in restaurants is, is an altogether trickier affair and you should probably take advantage of their facilities as smoking around people eating has been taboo for far longer than the smoking ban has existed. Uh, well, not in this part of the world it hasn't. You know, I've got to say that for absolute certain because in this part of the world you smoke between courses. That's because, you know, we're rough, tough Geordies, that kind of thing. Um, <laughs> and in all situations, it says here, you can try employing a folded newspaper or similar to fan yourself. <laughs> it says it's there, look. In all situations, you can try employing a folded newspaper or similar to fan yourself while exhaling as the extra airflow will help dissipate the e-cig vapour even quicker. As with the workplace, though, sometimes it's better to simply explain what vaping is to any staff and fellow general public members. It's unlikely to lead to permission to vape in every case, certainly not in enclosed places like airplanes, but the more we educate the ignorant and uninformed, the closer we move to a utopia of vaping anywhere and everywhere we like. And the final paragraph actually had it. It's about educating and it's about offsetting the idiocy that has come from the likes of the BMA. Who, I have to say, I keep saying it like that and I'm not sure I should. Yeah. Who, did, did you see any BMA people there at the ESIG summit? No. Did you, Sav? No. Did anybody admit to it? No. no. Was that Vivian Nathanson anywhere in... No. 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 Not a hope. Not a hope. They're the ones that have been sending letters out to all the football clubs saying that they should... <laughs> what are you laughing at now? <laughs> <sighs> I'm sorry. I'm putting you on full screen. Whenever you get a fit of the giggles like this, I'm just... That's just the way it is. Oh, that's Mark Shaw. I'm <laughs> just going to read out what he's typed in the chat. He said, for God's sake, you're vaping, not farting. Very <laughs> 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 continue. Okay. It was, it was <laughs> such a genteel show. <laughs> Fact of the matter is, there is no need to hide what you're doing. It's not illegal. And if somebody has an objection, somebody that's running the place has an objection to you doing what you are doing, they will come and tell you. I, I've i been all over this, this last few days. Like I say, went across to Ireland. I had no issue. In, the, in fact, the venue got one or two 
I'm not going to call them complaints, but comments from other guests who patently had no idea what was going on the next day. And so what they did, and I thought this was absolutely amazing to be, to be true, they opened up uh, a little boardroom like a snug. The, one of the, the, the girls off reception came in four or five times until the heating was just right. There was no issue with seating or anything like that and we could sit there and have the conversation. There was about 20 or 30 of us, not much more than that. It's like the, the cohort that was staying there. The drinks were coming in, the drinks were flowing. It was like, a, you know when you go to a party, you, you, you two will know all about this. When you go to a party, when you used to go to a party and everybody would go where the smokers went because that's where it was fun. And it was just like that. It was exactly like that. The vapors were sitting, were gassing, having a great deal of, you know, good crack. The crack was mighty. It was brilliant. Everybody was talking about the. I mean, and it was pan European. Those people there from Italy and France, all over the place, and were sitting there vaping and drinking, drinking and vaping, vaping and drinking. And they opened this room for us to do that because they understood that vapors are voters with their wallets and their feet. And the fact that the vape fest was on there the next day, it would have been a little bit churlish for them to go around and say, you can't use that in here. But, to be fair to other people, they opened, if you like, a dedicated vaping room. And the next night, even though the room, the big room, where Vape Fest Island was held, was kind of high until five o'clock, they gave us it the rest of the night, free, put a barman on, on a long, well, a barman and a bar girl, two bar people, on, so that we could sit and enjoy a good vape, and my God it was, and a few drinky poos, as you do. And that's exactly what we need to be suggesting to all of these places that are going, you know, places like Weatherspoons. They've got the one in Horton, our local one. It's got rooms falling out of its backside. It's bloody, got a bloody good big concert room upstairs that doesn't get used. Open that up. Let the vapors go up there. And you'll see everybody else go up there as well. Everybody will go where the vapors go. That's what we need to be telling them. That's the message we need to get across. They should do now what they ought to have done with the smoking ban. In my view, the smoking ban was completely out of kilter, totally out of kilter. And for the life of me, I can't understand why publicans let it through as easily as they did. They just sat back meekly and let the government walk all over them. I'd have been screaming and yelling and kicking if I'd been in their position. But never mind. What's done is done. We're trying, that's going to be, I think, changed in, in the coming years. But certainly in terms of vaping, if your local establishment is a bit uneasy about it, suggest to them, well, have you another room that I and my friends, which number 30, 40, 50, 60, however many people you can fill a room with, or you think you can fill a room with, is there another room we can use? Because obviously if there is, we'll be bringing all our business to you. That's the way to do it. Vote with your wallet, but give them a chance to take your money off you. Sav? Just got a couple of comments from chat. Um, Doug Phillips has said, the guy doing my roof thought that I was drinking a beer first thing in the morning. No, it was my Evic with a Pro Tank 2. What and size Leanna... glasses does he use? <laughs> what size glasses do they use down there for an Evic? Looks like a beer. I know, I know. Uh, Liana Lawless says, I was ordered not to vape in my own home because the workmen there couldn't stand the smoke, irritated their throats, and they opened all my windows. In which case, my dear, you should have eaten a bucket full of sprouts the night before they came and farted them senseless. Enough said. You said yep. that, Sav, not me, I'm not on screen. Oh, <coughs> chat has gone nuts with that. <laughs> have they? Yes. I'm so surprised. Yes. <laughs> not... Probably should pick me comments better. <laughs> <laughs> but loud, uh, sorry, Leanna Lawless has followed up saying, I swapped a coffee and a Gary Dibley tin and they didn't notice. Mm. Really? Mm -hmm. I'd be interested to know what she was using prior. Mm. Mm. Which means she'll type it in, but it'll go shooting off the top of the screen and you'll miss Very it. Very likely, yeah. Yes, almost certainly the case. What do you make? I mean, seriously. Lorian, what, 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 what do you make of our workmen or a, a gaggle of workmen coming into somebody's home 
and complaining about what they're doing in the privacy of their own home. Is an Englishman's home not his castle anymore? Well, no, this is, this is, funny, this is exactly what um, I said at, this, at the summit to that woman, is that people are conditioned to be, feel aversion to the image of anything that resembles smoke. I don't know if Liana said she sent me a message when that happened because it's, well, we were, it was the day we were at the summit mm. um, and somebody had been in and out actually smoking a cigarette at the time and yet he was having um, an issue with her vaporizer. It's psycho I absolutely believe it is psychological. People are conditioned to have a reaction to vapor or smoke coming out of somebody's mouth. Mm -hmm. it, it's, it, it, again, it beggars belief. I mean, I have had people tell me, not very many, thank God, that, that these things are worse for you than cigarettes. I don't know where the hell they've picked that up. Must have been in the Philippines when that crackpot from The Who decided to open his mouth and make such a, a ridiculous pronouncement. Um, mm. Your head's nodding, Sav, and you're taking a sharp <laughs> in-cake of breath. Go for it, kid. Go for it. Go for it. Uh, p Vapes has just typed in, I've had it happen at the cash machine once. The lady gasped and held her breath, only to let it go, and she exclaimed, Oh, that's not smoke. <laughs> It, 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 it purely and simply is a matter of education, you know. Um, reading through all of, all of the, 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 the bits of literature that come flying in from all over the world, it's patently obvious that people do not know and do not understand what the constituents of the vapour is. I, I, I can well understand somebody turning their nose up if your exhalate that's the posh word for what you breathe out when you're vaping. If it smells of, I don't know, rotten kippers mixed with marmite, custard and sweaty socks, I can understand them getting a little bit uppity about it because I do every time any... Maybe it's me, maybe it's my time of life, but my wife and I do occasionally like to go and do the lunch thing. And oh my good God, some of the ladies who lunch come past and it's like walking past the perfume counter in House of Fraser. It, you're just assuaged by this great cloud of ickiness, floral, sandalwood, puts you right off your bait, it does. So I can get, I do get, if you've got a really stinky vape, I do get that, that you know, that people might get a little bit iffy I got banned it. from my mum's house because I vape custards. <laughs> well, I'm <laughs> Yes. Like is that you as well? Have you been banned from your mum's house because you vape custard? No, my, my my the chef at work hates the smell of my custard, anything vanilla or custody. He thinks it smells fake and can't stand it. Yeah, well, you, the, the thing is, you'll have sympathy for me then, because tomorrow night, oh, yeah. tomorrow night, I've got three different custards <laughs> for Keith to have a try of. I'm thinking about cancelling the show, frankly. Because <laughs> I, 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 can, I can tell when he's been out in the garden with an AC going, the waft of custard just comes floating over like mist off the sea. It stinks. But never mind, you know, he likes it and he's happy with it. And it's substituting for his lit cigarette habit absolutely perfectly, which is a good thing. We need to do a bit of um, G uppery. Do you, you do some G uppery. Go on, Laurie, and get them tell. Tell them what they need to do. What we need to do now, yes. uh, we've been saying this for the last couple of weeks, um, and I said earlier, we need to be talking to our MPs face-to-face, -face, mm -hmm. actually meeting them. And to be honest, we've had a little word that there might be some leeway in Labour. So if any of you have given up on your Labour MPs, I suggest that you actually have a bit of a push and get back and speak to them. Um you know, that is the biggest thing we can do right now. Face to face, talk to them, let them see who you are before Dave gets an aneurysm from shaking his head like that. <laughs> that, that that's, 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 that's L, it's L for Labour. Yeah. Even if your MP's Labour, go, go and see them. Trust Lorian and me. Go and see them. Seriously. Tell them you know Ed Miliband. That's all you need to do. <clears throat> yeah. Seriously. Yeah, very important. Go and see... Your M it's a song. Go and see your MP. Tell them what an EC can be. <laughs> Tell me. Can't I think I we should that. probably call this. 
<laughs> I think you just tipped right over the edge. The balance is, I think the balance is gone. Yes, I think you're right. As usual, <laughs> the last don't, word. Don't even go there. <laughs> Really, is it that bad? There is nothing that I can read that coming from chat that doesn't involve farts or the smell of old women. (laughs) 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 But what I will say is... (laughs) Don't forget after us to tune in to our life or for Nikki's juicy bits. (laughs) That's after you've mentioned the smell of farts and old women. <laughs> right. <laughs> On the that- Maitland. Oh God. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> thank you for tuning in if you've been able to to watch. I hope you've got something out of the show. Somewhere along the lines, I'm sure the two ladies were speaking since I can't say that I was. I want to I want to say thank you to Lorian for joining us. Thanks to Sav for doing the wonderful job she always does. Thank you for Daz and Kat for, for hitting the Twitter and, and feeding stuff in as well. It's brilliant to know that the team works so well together and they do i'm proud to be part of it but the biggest thanks of all has got to go to you for joining us as you do as often as you do whether it be live or in video on demand don't forget until we see you next time vape on vape hard don't let the bastards grind you down see you next time ta-da